Child's Play. Never before has a child's toy seemed so scary. Released in 1988, Child's Play tells the story of the evil criminal Charles Lee Ray, aka Chucky, played with a delightful sinister glee by Brad Dorif, who while being hunted down by Detective Mike Norris, performs a voodoo ceremony at a toy store after being mortally wounded, where he transmits his soul into a good guy doll. A brand of dolls who in this movie's universe is popular among small children. The possessed doll finds its way to the arms of a small child called Andy, who is given the doll as a birthday present. However, Andy's life is soon turned upside down as Chucky starts to go on a murderous rampage, where Chucky wants to use his voodoo to take over Andy. In this enjoyable 1980s horror classic that gave us one of cinema's greatest boogeymen, as well as a newfound terror of dolls. Yeah, this one is awesome. Yep, today we're looking into Chucky, your number one friend till the end, as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about Child's Play. So I'll stop talking now, and we check it out. Number 10, Inspiration of Child's Play. Child's Play and its terrifying murderous killer doll Chucky is the brainchild of scriptwriter Don Mancini, and his inspiration of a killer toy let loose and running amok was inspired by the toy marketing craze that was aimed at kids during the 1980s, particularly the Cabbage Patch Kids dolls, which caused a huge frenzy at the time with desperate parents who were frantically trying to buy the creepy dolls for their pestering kids. Child's Play was to be a dark satire of this phenomenon. The funny thing is, the Garbage Pail Kids was also a dark satire of the Cabbage Patch Dolls. Other influences of Child's Play includes the Twilight Zone episode Living Doll, which also features a sinister doll that comes to life called Talkie Tina, as well as being influenced by the 1976 horror movie The Omen. And Chucky's look itself is based on a 1980s doll brand called My Buddy. And yeah, when you look at a My Buddy doll, you can really see the similarities. And wow, are these dolls ever horrific? If my parents ever gave me one of these dolls when I was a kid, I most definitely would have shit the bed out of fear. Faster than you can say, objection hearsay. Incidentally, the same year as writing Child's Play, Mancini wrote the script for a movie called Cellar Dweller, which is about a demon monster being released after a comic book artist drew it. Which, in a way, is kind of similar to Child's Play. In the sense of this idea of monsters being created, or unleashed due to the powers of magic. Number 9. Original Concepts So at the start of Child's Play, we see the terrifying Chucky doll be created when serial killer Charles Lee Ray performs a voodoo ceremony where he passes his soul onto the doll after being shot in pursuit by Detective Mike Norris. However, there were ideas other than voodoo that were being floating around as to how to bring the Chucky doll to life. At one stage, there was this idea where the good guy doll that Andy is given for his birthday is a special type of good guy doll that can get cut and bleeds fake blood, to which you have to put band-aids on the doll. However, while playing with Chucky, Andy cuts his finger, and his blood mixes with Chucky's fake blood, which causes Chucky to come alive. Another version of the script saw Charles Lee Ray's spirit enter the good guy doll after being executed on the electric chair and another particular early version of the script was going to be more ambiguous as to whether or not Chucky is even the real killer in the movie, or if it's Andy himself, with Chucky being a representation of Andy's rage, which would have made Child's Play more psychological, but probably not as fun. I mean, part of the appeal of Chucky is watching him delightfully kill people while delivering cheesy one-liners. I don't think we would have gotten that if the movie was more of a whodunit, with a mystery as to whether or not Andy or the doll is the real killer. 
basically this version of the script would have seen Andy's bullies and mean babysitters getting killed without really knowing if it was Chucky. But thankfully they went with the voodoo subplot. However, it's been said that Charles Play's writer and creator Don Mancini really didn't like the voodoo subplot. Hey, I'll take that over the magical toy blood subplot any day. Number eight, original choice for director. The Child's Play script found its way to MGM and United Artists at the hand of producer David Kirshner, who had previously produced and co-written the animated feature An American Tale. He incidentally had wanted to make a killer doll movie after reading the book The Dollhouse Murders. So with that, production started. A director was needed, and the original choice for director was William Friedkin, whom had previously directed The Exorcist. Well, Child's Play is a horror, and it doesn't get any more horrific than The Exorcist. Next in line was Irvin Kirshner, who was kind of the king of sequels, having previously directed The Empire Strikes Back. However, nothing came out of the production's offers to Friedkin and Kirshner, so instead, Tom Holland came on board as director. Nope, not that Tom Holland, this guy. An American film director who, three years earlier, had great success with directing the teenage vampire horror comedy Fright Night, which featured actor Chris Sarandon as the movie's main villain, who also appears in Child's Play, only this time he was the hero. Number seven, the Chucky we nearly got. So Child's Play features a very impressive cast, including Chris Sarandon, as mentioned, as Detective Mike Norris, the detective who has a vendetta against Charles Lee Ray and wants to stop his evil shenanigans, Catherine Hicks as Karen Barclay, Andy's kind-hearted but frantic mother, and Dina Manoff as Andy's babysitter Maggie, who I didn't even know till now also played one of the pink ladies in Greece. Huh, who'd have thought? As well as little Alex Vincent, who played Andy, who still actually turns up in Child's Play movies every now and then. And of course, there's Brad Dorif, who played the part of Charles Lee Ray, and thus would voice the Chucky doll. Dorif is a delight in Child's Play, because even though he's playing a part that's incredibly evil, you can just tell that he's having so much fun with it, almost making him like a doll version of Freddy Krueger. However, Chucky could have had a completely different face and voice, as quite early on in the casting process of the movie, actor John Lithgow was considered to play the part. And he definitely would have been an interesting choice, and I can actually really see him embracing the character's sinister side. And Lithgow has played several sinister roles in movies, including Santa Claus the Movie and Cliffhanger. But instead, director Tom Holland reached out to Dorif, as he had previously worked with him on the movie Fatal Beauty. And so Dorif stepped in to play Charles Lee Ray. And Charles Lee Ray's name is an amalgamation of real life killers, including Charles Manson, Lee Harvey Oswald, and James Earl Ray. So in other words, Charles Lee Ray was a pretty bad dude. Number six, movie title debacle. Child's Play is a great name for the movie, as it's a phrase that's often used to describe children's playtime, but the movie also does make it sound kind of sinister. However, the original title of the movie was in fact, Batteries Not Included. Once again, a phrase often associated with childhood playtime, particularly with toys, as it's a phrase that often comes with toys informing parents that batteries are not included. So you better get some batteries if you want this toy to work for your kids. But there's also a double meaning here, suggesting that Chucky doesn't need batteries, as he's powered by pure evil. However, at the same time of Child's Play's production, it was discovered that another movie was in production which was also called Batteries Not Included, which was a Spielberg-produced, more family-friendly science fiction fantasy. The production felt that it couldn't go up against Spielberg in a showdown of movie titles, so the title would have to be changed where the movie became Blood Buddy, which is probably at the time when the script had Chucky coming to life after coming into contact with Andy's blood. But from there, the movie became Child's Play. However, the problems and confusions weren't over yet, as it was felt that the movie may have to be retitled yet again, as it had the same name as a 1972 mystery movie, also called Child's Play. But I guess the production thought, meh, no one probably remembers that movie, so they stuck with the title of Child's Play anyway, and in my opinion, thankfully. 
Number five, bringing Chucky to life. So the biggest challenge facing Child's Play was how on earth was the production going to create a murderous walking, talking children's toy? Chucky was actually designed by Kevin Yugger, who had previously designed Freddy Krueger's burnt makeup and would go on to create the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. In fact, it is said that if you look closely, you can see that Chucky and the Crypt Keeper have the same eye props. Yep, they've got the same eyes. Incidentally, Yugger would go on to marry Catherine Hicks, who played Andy's mother, Karen. Now, an electronic Chucky prop was created, which needed a staggering 11 puppeteers to operate and control, with each puppeteer controlling a different function that operated Chucky. Some scenes in the movie even featured actors wearing Chucky costumes, one of whom being John Franklin, whom had previously starred as a child villain in Children of the Corn, as well as Alex Vincent's real-life baby sister. Yeah, the little sister of the boy who played Andy. And, of course, Ed Gale, who had previously performed as Howard the Duck and a dink in Spaceballs. And, yeah, the crew actually set Franklin on fire as well as dropping from 8 feet, which unfortunately caused a back injury. It's interesting seeing photos of the actors performing in a Chucky mask, as it looks kind of weird. I don't know, it kind of looks like what you get when you order Chucky from Wish. Okay, so we've covered the physicality of Chucky, but what about the sound of Chucky? Number 4, Chucky's original voice. So as we all know, Brad Dorif played Charles Lee Ray, and thus would also voice Chucky, and he does so with delightful dread and enthusiasm. Although Chucky could have had a completely different sounding voice, as when it came to recording Chucky's lines, originally Brad Dorif was unavailable to record Chucky's dialogue. So director Tom Holland felt that Chucky should have a more feminine voice, inspired by Reagan's demonic voice in The Exorcist, as well as having the voice mixed in with electronic overlays, like the Robbie the Robot toys to reflect how toys with sound chips sounded back in those days. So actress Jessica Walter was brought on board to voice the plastic serial killer. And apparently, in an early cut of Child's Play, the voice of Chucky was actually voiced by Walter. However, along the way, it was decided to change Chucky's voice, and thankfully they were able to bring back Brad Dorif, who recorded the Chucky lines, as it was felt that Walter's voice just didn't go with the character, and that it was also felt that test audiences also didn't like the voice. Which is probably just as well, as I couldn't imagine Chucky sounding any other way than with with Dorif's vocal cords. Also, Chucky's non-evil toy voice was provided by child actor Eden Gross, who had starred in several popular sitcoms, including Cheers and Married with Children. Number three, Child's Play was considered very controversial and there was a push to ban it. Despite the fact that Child's Play is now considered a 1980s horror movie classic, right up there with the likes of A Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th, it wasn't all smooth sailing at the start. In fact, Child's Play was seen by some parent groups to be dangerous to society and should be banned, as it was believed that Child's Play would lead to children committing acts of violence. Despite the fact that the child in the movie, Andy, isn't, you know, violent, but instead it's his doll that commits all the violence. And all you had to do was to actually watch the movie to realise that. There was even a huge protest at the entrance to the MGM Studios for the movie to be blatantly banned, despite the fact that Child's Play is rated R and is not a kid's movie. I can actually remember being a kid and many adults, including my parents and friends' parents, really did not like Child's Play and actually did see it as something dangerous. My parents in particular thought that it was disgusting and ghoulish. And when my older sister rented it from a video store, they wouldn't even let the Child's Play videotape enter the house. Like, as if having this video in our home would be dangerous somehow. Although, in hindsight, I don't think Child's Play is any worse than any other 1980s horror movies. In fact, I think it's quite tame, especially when compared to some other horror movies of that decade like Evil Dead and Hellraiser. In my opinion, it's nowhere near as worse as, say, Poltergeist, which also featured scenes of a deadly doll trying to kill a kid. But no one was protesting for Poltergeist to be banned or found it dangerous to society. 
Now I think, and this is just an opinion, that what terrified people so much was the idea of a children's toy coming to life and trying to kill kids, told in this new modern setting of commercialism, with a modern 1980s horror slasher movie aesthetic, which made it more blatant and more horrific. When we think of childhood toys, we think of childhood innocence, and maybe having that image be corrupted was just too much at the time. Something that is meant to make children feel happy and safe trying to kill people was just too much for the adult audiences. But once again, that's just a guess. And sadly, the notion of child's play being too dangerous for public consumption would bleed into the third movie after a real life tragedy. But that's a story for another episode. Number two, deleted scenes. There are actually tons of deleted scenes that didn't make it into child's play. Scenes that were removed due to disastrous screen tests of early cuts of the movie. In those early days, child's play's duration was two hours long, with 25 minutes being cut from the movie. Now, during the filming of child's play, there was supposedly conflict and clashes of creative directions. The movie's producer David Kirshner didn't want to see too much of the Chucky doll and to create more of a suspenseful atmosphere, like Jaws and Alien. You know, the less is more approach. However, director Tom Holland had his own visions of how Chucky should be portrayed in the movie, and according to Wikipedia, he was against the cuts being made, of which caused him to leave the production. Some of these deleted scenes include a scene at the start of the movie, where Mike Norris is in disguise as a woman in order to track down Charles Lee Ray, as well as a scene where Andy shows Chucky his bedroom and explains that his father died in a car crash. A scene where the voodoo doctor performs a voodoo ritual in order to help a sick infant, and an entire removed subplot where Chucky befriends and manipulates a young girl called Mona as well as an alternative ending where Andy kills Chucky by strapping a knife onto a remote control car which he uses to stab Chucky and then squirts him in the face with some chemical agent that's in a water pistol, which causes Chucky to melt. There was even a deleted pop song that was intended to be used as Chucky's funky theme. However, this was rejected as it was felt that the song sounded a little too silly. And... Yeah, upon hearing it, it definitely does sound incredibly comical. So yeah, there was actually a lot removed from the first Child's Play movie. But who knows, maybe one day we will get a director's cut. Number 1. Cinematic Play Despite its controversies, Child's Play was very successful, with it becoming United Artists' second highest grossing movie of 1988, behind Rain Man. Upon its release in November of that year, Child's Play would make over $44 million on a mere $9-13 million budget. Child's Play surprisingly also got pretty good reviews from critics, who found it to be a fun, energetic horror movie, with it being recognised as a scary modern take on the killer doll trope, but also a humorous satire of modern day toy commercialism. So it was clear that Chucky was here, and that he was here to stay, and now Child's Play can grow and evolve into a mega movie franchise. Except for one problem, United Artists dropped Child's Play and ended attempts to make a sequel, as the company felt that there was no money to be made in horror movies, especially sequels to Child's Play. Okay, to be fair, United Artists were being brought by an Australian company called Quintex, and it was them who didn't want to produce horror movies. So the rights of the Child's Play series was then sold to Universal Pictures. That is why all future Child's Play home releases were distributed by MGM, whereas the sequels were released by Universal Pictures. In conclusion, Child's Play is a great and fun horror movie of the 80s, and it has lots of enjoyability. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but that's okay, as I think that benefits the story, making it more of a fun comic book horror movie rather than a deadpan serious one, which probably wouldn't have gone with the movie's subject matter. I mean, after all, we're talking about a killer toy. Child's Play proved to us that toys and dolls can be scary, and from that grew one of cinema's greatest boogeymen. And thanks to the addictive enjoyability of Child's Play, never before, had playtime looked so scary. It 
goes without saying that Child's Play has gone on to become a cult movie with tons of adoring fans all over the world, including this bald guy right here. So it's definitely time to get out your copies of Child's Play and give it another watch so we can all enjoy just how great this movie really is. Anyway, I'm Minty. And never forget that the original movie poster of Child's Play claims that Chucky is so scary, even Freddy Krueger has nightmares about him. Oh, that's a lot of scary, and that really is quite a claim to make. See ya!